Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello there, my name is Salim Javed and I'm an assistant professor at the Faculty of Mass Communication and Media Technology at SJT University. This particular video, which is the eighth video of module two, is completely devoted to documentary. Here we will understand what is a documentary, why they are important, what is the difference between fiction and non-fiction film, how documentary as a form has evolved over the years, who are the people that are involved in documentary filmmaking process, their roles and responsibilities. We will also learn how to write a documentary proposal also and will explore the documentary script format itself. So let's get started. Now on page 61 of the book Introduction to Documentary, which is written by Bill Nichols and printed by uh, Indiana University Press, Bill Nichols presents a point that for every documentary, there are at least three stories that intervene. What are those three stories? The filmmakers, the films and the audiences. You know, we want to watch a documentary because it is about something. Now, this something is coming from someone and from somewhere. For every documentary, there is a reason for it, you know, being made. This reason is often idiosyncratic or, you know, personal in nature. Now, from the point of view of most of the film historian, the you know, the, the interpretation of uh, the film Triumph of the Will, which was made in 1935 by Leni Refinstein, often picks up one of these two interpretations. Number one, either praising the film as a great piece of film art, or number two, or criticizing the film as a blatant piece of Nazi propaganda. Since then, till now, it has been the case with many documentaries. You may eulogize it or you may abhor it. The validation is as per your stand. Now let's understand what is a documentary. Well, documentary is a motion picture which does not fictionalize the reality and represent it primarily for dictation, education and preserving historical data records and propaganda is a hidden fact. Now, before we allow ourselves to involve further, let's first understand the uh, difference between fiction and a non-fiction film. There are, you know, many similarities also. So let's explore the similarities as well as the differences like both film and documentary are an audiovisual medium. Both film and documentary show motion. Both film and uh, documentary film transcends time and space. Film is subjective, but documentary film are mostly objectives, uh, are mostly objective. They can be subjective, as in the case of uh, uh, performative style of documentary. Film has target audience in mind. Documentary is subject specific, thus audience specific. Film is more controlled and documentary is not that controlled in production sense. Therefore, they are more flexible. 
in most of the cases film deals with fiction documentaries deal with fact and not fiction in a documentary subject is paramount and credibility is the key therefore form is far more important than the formula if you remember in uh, uh, lecture 5 of the module 2 in which we talked about film and television personnel while talking about different uh, job titles of film and television producer category we talked about the impact producer that is a specific role more often for documentary films which you know which um, has a mission or message and it wants to have change by raising awareness and inspiring some action he or she is instrumental in defining the film's message they are also known by the name of uh, uh, outreach or community engagement consultant or strategists now if we talk about the similarities and differences between the two you know fiction and non fiction can we say that every fiction film is a non fiction film also in some sense or the other even if you talk about the most eccentric film even that film furnishes you with some education dictation or in case of a historical film at least some data now even the joke has two parts one which is factually right and the second part can be an exaggeration based on the first part which is factually right the first part has to be you know full proof otherwise joke will not work and here we are talking about documentary which relies heavily on objectivity of the subject and where facts are more important than the fiction now every kind of a film has something to offer you know that something that is being offered makes the difference via presentation when you have a close ended incident progression you know um at least you reach a point uh, though many times you do not end it uh, properly or you keep it open ended in linear or non linear manner we are talking about fiction films these are the films where we get lost and try to bring moons and stars to the ground it is a willing suspension of non reality where we want to escape to it is where our nightmares come true and we get them you know we get over them victoriously when we represent the life as it is when we are representing them socially without any alteration of fact or biases we are making documentaries these are the things which can be seen in uh, you know with our own eyes we can feel it we can touch it we can smell it and um, it's tangible in the sensory perception of this world it is the way of arranging the facts the order of the things which add more meaning to the context as it has been said that many unstructured sentences are less than a structured sentence it is the selection and arrangement of shots and the argument that brings the meaning in it these styles range from news reel to realist to romantic to propaganda and many more however the first being the classic cinema style of documentary film making which is the most structured and traditional form of documentary and gives the importance to clarity of narrative and images the second being the direct cinema or cinema verite which are often used interchangeably cinema verite uh, you know means true cinema in french 
it aims for an extreme naturalistic using non professional actors non intrusive filming filming techniques handheld camera genuine location and naturalistic sound you know without post production or voice overs the third in the series is documentary drama or you can call it docu drama or docu fiction this style mixes the technique of drama and the factual element of documentary real events are acted out by professional actors in controlled setting um, which is um, obviously a very constructed in style now apart from the classic cinema style of documentary film making cinema verite and docu drama there is a further classification that exist apart from these things now let's explore that classification so first in the list is a uh, poetic documentary now we always look for an order in in things what will happen if the order or the pattern becomes a dominating factor even for your creativity if you are in a habit of writing suppose you are in a habit of writing and i come and tell you that this is uh, what you have to write and this is how you have to write trust me writing which is a, a hobby for you the writing will become a burden for you poetic documentary was a sort of answer uh, to the predefined and perfectly laid out kind of rules within which you supposed to tailor made your product it was adamant in its approach as it rejected the traditional grammatical format of film making it first did away with continuity editing and organized shot as per theme for example a single theme for the entire documentary as is the case with joris ivan's rain which was released in year 1928 If you happen to see this film it's a beautiful collection of images where a busy town is established and then you know someone comes and he flips his hand so he feels ra- rain on his hand and then he colors up and runs immediately from there and then a be- then a stream of beautiful images starts flowing in some may find it fragmentary but it's actually very lyrical and impressionistic and now let's talk about uh, uh, expository documentary which is second in the list if you watch the first episode of ways of seeing towards the end of this documentary john berger says that you receive images and meaning which are arranged i hope you will consider what i have arranged but be skeptical of it the documentary which is divided into four equal parts starts with some of the assumptions and question format about the tradition of european painting the tradition which was born about 1400 and died about 1900 what is so interesting or uh, about this particular documentary other than it being coming from bbc and it is also a best award winning series is the way it interacts with its viewers or audience the anchor and in this case uh, john berger is delivering his dialogues in an authoritative uh, commentary directly and indirectly in the form of voice over and subtitles he has a point to put forward which he is doing very objectively he is omniscient in the series he is also omnipresent as well and if not thou be present the voice of god will will be there all the adjectives that i have used while describing it are the characteristics of expository documentary now let's talk about 
observational documentary which is third in the list if ever there is a feature film made on the life of bob dylan the 1967 documentary film don't look back don't look back is the name of the documentary which is uh, made by da pan baker will definitely be one of the top source material in the research and reference of the character for the reference of the character this documentary which is made in observational style of uh, uh, filming covers the the tour of bob dylan in 1965 in london when you start watching this documentary you start realizing that camera is just there like uh, any person who has a full access to their public as well as personal life the camera is just there to observe it this fly on a wall style which was the product of its time came into existence because of many technological advancement that took place during that point of time now moving away from block to zoom lens it was easy to focus on spot without a focus puller fast pan and pull back happening spontaneously was not possible by a single person before this particular documentary is like half finished beautiful fiction film only thing that is missing uh, is you know some dramatic incidents and some plot points you know to qualify it as a feature film it has light hearted moments and the moments that uh, you, you know which raise a kind of a concern for bob dylan it shows the process of songwriting and stage performances the world of fans and the contributors the argument within the frame continues the scene and it eschew other devices like uh, voice over and uh, bg um, uh, bg etc now fourth in the list is participatory documentary it is like what will you do if all the power is vested in you if it is not if if you know if it does not corrupt you it will definitely influence you or you will influence the content it would not be wrong to say that if you as a director start participating in your own film it will definitely alter or influence the flow or structure of the film when we watch uh, um, documentaries like uh, chronicle of a summer uh, 1960 directed by rouge and morin or uh, ross mckelvey's march which was released in 1985 we observe that the film is carried forward with the help of you know voice over along with what participants are saying and the observation or commentary of the director in most of the participatory documentary the director is the main uh, main voice or narrator of the film or documentary here the relation and interaction between the creator and the subject is a uh, is of a critical kind uh, for this kind of a documentary if your character is blinking as is the case with the man with the moving camera you you know you show fast fade in and fade out to mimic the human eye movement in the beginning of the chronicle of a uh, summer the idea of cinema verite is introduced by rouge and morin which is technically the french version of uh, kino pravda you know kino i which is basically a machine is fully capable of ca- capturing the life as it is uh, which was given by vertov This film is different from other similar films which were made in the name of city symphonies because not only it captures the participants you know in this case the audience but also the cameraman the editor the process of making um, the process of meaning creation and much more for filmmakers who believe in this style of cinema the construction is the cinema itself 
now fifth in the list is reflexive documentary it is a documentary style which does not see itself as an objective style of filmmaking instead takes on the world and underlines its um, you know contriteness and emphasizing that this is what it means this style of filmmaking is not about what is to be represented or how it will be represented this style of filmmaking prompts us to question the very system of constructedness it argues that if uh, there is constructedness the authenticity of the world presented in the documentary is under criticism this style of filmmaking was highly skeptical of realism as claimed by many even today also land without bread or wedding camels which are directed by brunel and macdougall respectively are two wonderful examples of this style you must see these two films the voice over in these two documentary is so jarring and it defamiliarizes you so much that it makes you feel very much detached about the topic and the film itself the last in the list is performative documentary now this style of filmmaking is subjective in nature this uh, you know uh, uh, this denouncement of the world is the choice and creation of a subjective viewpoint it can be an uh, allegory and analogy at the same time because the topic that are covered in this style of filmmaking are very personal to the creator they can be very unconventional and may offer a different point of view which may not be you know comfortably adjusted with the conventional thinking at the core level these films are very personal but often liaison with larger political and historical setups tanks united is an artistic impressionistic and performative documentary which uh, marlon riggs released in year 1989 part poetry and part journalism this documentary explores the very personal element of a minority and some broader issues related to the same topic uh livingston's paris is burning which was released in 1991 is on the same line now new stylistic elements are experimented every year and the lines between genres have been crossed so many times that specific categories are impossible to be defined uh reality tv for example has stormed the world of television taking direct cinema to a new level of voyeurism terms like mockumentary uh documentary pseudo documentary and fake fiction is not uncommon but was it so complicated from the beginning were there no clear cut lines well it all started with the first public screening of cinematograph in december 1895 whether you call it the beginning of motion picture or cinema or documentary it's all up to you all the spokes which have been just talked about are the nomenclatures which came into existence quite later in the beginning it was all about simply recording what was happening in front of the camera the workers leaving the lumiere factory which was made in 1895 was 46 seconds long all the other films like uh, the gardener baby's breakfast fishing for 
gold fish blacksmiths jumping onto the blanket bathing in the sea each was almost 17 meter uh, long or in length and around 50 seconds in duration in the long run of the judicious worker leaving the Lumiere factory may be uh, seen as the first documentary and the gardener as the first comedy these initial films uh, were titled as actualities all these films uh, were a small incident from normal life and were you know caught at an ease as people were you know they were not aware of the fact that there is anything like camera exist this may not be a big thing today but when people uh, got to know that there is something called camera and people saw films made by these cameras as you have seen in many reflexive participatory or observational documentaries you know that people look uh, um, the people used to look in the camera because they knew that they would be seeing themselves one day so in this way the first documentary of the world caught people naturally now unfortunately the first film made by robert flaherty nanu of the north in year 1922 was not called the first documentary it was his second film uh, Moana which had uh, you know which is called the first uh, uh, documentary by John Grierson who used the word documentary in connection with Moana in 1926 though it was uh, Bolslaw Matsuwiski um, you know uh, the Polish writer and filmmaker who identified the mode of documentary film in 1898 the first bard of documentary or the father of documentary Robert Flaherty's style of documentary um, you know his style emphasized on observational style of filmmaking he believed in recording what was happening in front of the camera for him the film was made primarily in the camera as like robert flaherty his uh, contemporary in soviet union dizge vertov was on the run with his camera for three years to make his film the man with the moving camera the man dizge vertov was on a constant move to define what is cinema does it need to tell a story what is it as it was shot for three years and in five different cities it was presented to audience as a day in the life of soviet city films his other films like enthusiasm 1931 and the three songs about lenin 1934 helped establish his reputation as one of the pioneers he was inculpated as a formalist the concept of kino i was introduced by him only though it was john greerson who used the word documentary for moana you know which was directed by robert flaherty in 1926 and called him the father of it too but he was very critical of his work he objected to his obsession with primitive instinct and to the past greerson's personal approach was exactly the opposite of uh, what was of Laherty's. He was a champion of realism and of social value uh, of the documentary. For him, the chosen subject must be socially relevant, which can be used for, you know, bringing in information, education or awareness. The immediate contribution of the project in the immediate milieu even to the extent of propaganda also majority of the films which he made for many government agencies in uk and canada or the other commercial films indicate his tilt towards education and propaganda he was an ardent believer of the creative treatment of actualities now world war one was a new kind of a war here collective victories and collective loss was at stake and it not only devoured human lives but also the societies so 
the war was not of just military one um, you know it was about people as well and here is where propaganda came into existence propaganda took a new shape during the time of uh, first world war and reached a new artistic height in the form of aggie prop in soviet union uh, world war 2 was just not the big fight among nations it was of ideologies also two ideologies at their best in 1935 lenin refinstein's film triumph of the will and olympiad in 1938 are uh, two films which was made with observatory style and it catered to the behaviorism of a particular time every nation big or small use cinema for propaganda purpose majority of the film making nations use cinema to mobilize its citizens and other used it to mobilize a very specific unit like the soldiers it was all done in the name of serving the nation or showing one's allegiance to a particular party films like why we fight by frank capra or the film like uh, let there be light by huston which is exactly on the opposite side of why we fight by frank capra are some of the brilliant examples of it humanity has never seen the kind of aftermath that happened during the world war 2 the atrocities abomination monstrosity enormity and horror uh films like night and fog directed by ali rene in 1955 is a true account of jew genocide horror which as shown in the film is still clinging to the walls of auschwitz where cement is scratched through nails those marks are still there now from kino pravda and kino i the the apogee of the first into later its direct and indirect influence on italian neorealism and italian neorealism direct influence on movements like you know cinema verite and direct cinema it's quite evident apart from kino i it was all happening in the middle of the last century the term came in limelight when it was used in chronicle of a summer of film directed by by jean rouge in the year 1961 where he was interested in showing the observed reality of everyday life of commoners without the evidential mediation the film is trying to prove its own kind of truth which is emerging within the film as we are watching it the filmmaker can be one of the participant or actor in his or her own film the message is clear even before we start shooting the film and the process of filming the subject is to an extent that those initial goals set um, even before you start shooting your film the exploration of truth not as an object but the truth that will emerge from the film while exploring the life in a in in a raw form without any sort of presentation ability is the key to cinema verite whereas in direct cinema where the film itself try to show us the truth as if the camera will tell the truth it does not matter even for this truth you have to follow people or interfere them for the same the film develops at its own and this style of filmmaking promotes by being just there to capture what is happening and do not have a point to prove and it adopts the fly on the wall kind of an approach don't look back again it's the name of the film don't look back is a wonderful example of it now um for indian side of the story the venue was the watson hotel in bombay where six films of the lumiere brothers were screened by marius sisser 
one of uh, the Lumiere's assistant, um, Bhad Vadekar, Hiralal Sen and his brother Motilal Sen, J.F. Madan, uh, Jyotish Chandra Sarkar, S.N. Pathanka, Narayan Ji Diware, R. Uh, Prakash and C. Rangya were some of the early individuals who were involved in the film business by either being the distributor, exhibitor or as uh, cameraman and showing the films uh, at different places in India. In this discipline, um, uh, like uh, many early efforts in this discipline were the investiture or marriage ceremonies of royal family as they were capable of affording this novelty. Some other incidents of national importance were also recorded. Now, the unsettling, the unsettled debate of being called the first documentary film of India is still on. Uh, the wrestling and the arrival of R.B. Paranjpay, um, both films are by Bhadwadekar and the growth of the pea plant, 1912 by Gundiraj Govind Palke are the main contesting films for the title. I think the debate may settle down on how movies are made, a film which was made by Gundi Raj Palke to convince the, f the, the financier. Now, Mysore, Gem City of India and Keda are two next important films by Mohan Bhavani in this series. All the major political, social and historical events of 1920s and 1930s were transformed or captured through camera. The film as a tool for propaganda was initially used in World War I as we have just come to know and its full potential was realized in World War II. As India was a British colony by then, British Empire tried using the same you know, technique for brainwashing the Indian against many German and Italian na nationals living in India and it tried its best to gain approval or support for its decision of war against Germany and Italy. J.B.H. Wadia as chairman of Film Advisory Board Film Advisory Board, FAP, was established under the guidance of Desmond Young from Department of Information in Delhi and um, with uh, P. N. Uh, Thapar, M. B. Bilmore, P. G. P. J. Griffith and Roland Jones as its member. Before uh, it ceased to exist, Film Advisory Board, it branched itself into the Information Film of India and Indian News Parade to unify the film uh, vertically. Later on, the interim government in 1946 gave only a grant of one rupee to the Information Film of India IFI as it viewed this agency IFI as one of the agencies of British Empire. The effect of this move other than the, inf the information film of India ceased to exist was that when our country got its independence on 15th August 1947, there was no government film institute to capture this long awaited moment in the history of modern India. Film division which was established in 1948 was the name that was given to the new film unit and interestingly many of those who were uh, with the with the information film of india ifi and indian news parade inp you know many of those who were with these two agencies many of them rejoined film division the mid 60s saw a change in the style of documentaries being made till then Face to Face by K.S. Chari was a new kind of a program where the commoners were given a chance to voice their opinion. Jain Bhuvanagari steered the film division into a new era. Many remarkable films were made during this time. New subjects and fresh approaches were welcomed. The 1970s brought home some stark realization. 
this led to the disenchantment among the people and the pre-emergency period saw a wave of popular dissent one of the most significant documentaries of this time was wave of revolution by anand patwardhan the year following the emergency have witnessed many uh, many powerful oppositional films that took a hard look at political events and social ills of that time the video boom of the 1980s uh, and 1990s uh, uh, resulted in the technological shift that was less expensive and more affordable the the alternative documentary in india thrives as a filmic tradition today films like ustad alauddin khan by ritwik ghatak and in in story by tapan ke bose in 1981 they call me chamar by lok sen lalwani in 1980 deepak dhanraj kya hua is sheher ko uh, safdar ram ke naam face after the storm and uh, sonal um, these two films was made by prakash jha um, satyajit ray filmmaker um, film made by uh, sham benegal love in india uh, kaushik mukherji inshallah football by um, ashwin kumar uh, children of a desired sex and india cabaret by meera nair and um, jeevan smriti by rit uh, ritparna ghosh and an encounter with faces are some of uh, you know some of prominent documentaries there are so many other documentaries uh, as i was just able to just uh, say say these name there are so many wonderful documentaries as well many recent documentaries uh, either made in india or by indian documentary filmmakers have been doing wonders on international scale uh 2008 film smile pinky directed by megan mylan um it won the academy award for best uh, uh, documentary short subject very interesting film uh, katia baz which was later on renamed as parlis it was released in cinema in 2013 it's a wonderful film a, a very different take on documentary filmmaking if you get a chance to see this film katia baz by the name of parlis you must see it in 2018 period end of the sentence also got the academy award for best documentary short subject are just these are just some of the examples now so far we have talked about what is documentary why they are important why they are called non fiction film etc now let's move our attention to practical side of it here we will not only learn about the important documentary personnel uh, you know who does what kind of a thing uh, but uh, uh, we will also learn about how to develop a documentary proposal and why it is important for a documentary to um, you know have it after learning about documentary proposal we will learn about the documentary film formatting now uh you know most documentary production teams tend to be smaller than those needed for uh, you know fiction films uh, soap opera or magazine programs the main reason for this is that budget tends to be smaller it is believed that documentaries do not require an extensive crew they do not need costume designer art director or some technical specialist moreover documentary styles like um, observational uh, filmmaking requires small crew who are less intrusive 
and therefore more likely to develop an intimacy with the subject you know in case of a student production or an independent project due to obvious financial crisis or constraint the crew tends to be smaller it is even not unusual to have one person covering a multitude of roles you know some of the most important job titles in documentary uh, filmmaking are like uh, uh, executive producer so executive producer he or she can be you know commissioning editor from a television broadcaster or production company who provides the finance for the film we have producer also so the producer he or she works with the director to get the film made and is answerable to the executive producer director he or she is the key creative and editorial decision maker you know um, sometimes taking the uh, producer's role as well some directors work you know without a camera crew shooting everything at their own um then you have a production manager so this production manager the person is responsible for uh, managing the budget and day to day running of the production you have a fixer also so the fix uh, so the fixer he or she is mostly from the local area where the filming takes place you know they are responsible for providing detailed uh, detailed knowledge and access of that particular place now you must be wondering why till now i have not talked about the researcher who is the backbone of a documentary now as documentaries uh, or as documentary films are about facts so there must be a great amount of research happening every film especially a documentary film has a value now this value could be of uh, social political historical philosophical artistic or of some other kind the amount of research which a researcher puts in is directly related to the value of the film a researcher is the one who assists the director in finding key stories participants and background information now let's talk about editor in the same row editor he or she assembles the film from the short footage and works closely with the director now once the the preliminary research has been completed the raw content can be developed into a proposal and then a treatment the proposal will be the key selling or pitching document for the project a director or in some cases a producer will always be required to explain the project you know the uh, right through to the final delivery but with the help of right kind of a documentary proposal the pitching becomes organized thus it becomes slightly easy and trust me it opens many doors as well the documentary proposal should always present what can often be complex or sensitive idea in a compelling way the writing needs to be simple and direct it should catch the you know eyes and ears and imagination of whosoever is reading it or listening it it is a way of uh, envisaging a film before it is made the proposal will include a uh, a description of the project identify the key participants and argue what why this project should be made the most important consideration for a director or a producer when writing this documentary proposal is that it need to be compelling it needs to tell a good story it should also be remember i mean one should remember this that fundamentally we are discussing a audio visual medium the documentary is not just about an issue 
at this stage the proposal should indicate the length of the production period and outline any preliminary production plans it should identify the uh, intended audience as well alongside or within the proposal there should be a treatment the treatment should put into writing how the project will look on screen it provides additional information like mood of the film the feel the shooting style the locations and the contributors when you are you know what you are seeing on your screen is a is a front page of a documentary proposal that we have created in our classes what you can see here is the name of the documentary who is directing it when uh, it's supposed to go on air what it is all about and what is a new approach with which this already known topic will be made uh, their contacts details um, and who is the producer of the documentary let's explore let's explore it but as we move uh, forward then you get to see these uh, uh, six points so point number one says synopsis and background point number two says documentary objectives obviously you should be very clear about it then point number three says airing and distribution uh, you also have to plan this in advance what is production timetable what is the budget of the film and who are the key personnel now suppose if as I go further and uh, if I talk about synopsis uh, so the title of the documentary is through blood to blood and um, uh, this entire thing is uh, being prepared in in our university by our students and we I have been teaching them about this so um, just to give you a, a brief I just read this first uh, paragraph that the documentary through blood to blood deals with the universal problem of uh, decomposing of sanitary napkin in the environment and the way it is impacting the animal psychology now this is one small paragraph and it is giving you exact idea of uh, what this entire film is dealing with and how it is going to deal with uh, this particular issue in uh, the specific duration that you are proposing for. Now synopsis is basically kind of an idea where you actually uh, t um, you can include a little bit of treatment also where you actually are telling your uh, uh, your, uh, your your potential uh, investors what exactly or your uh, potential um, um, uh, commissioning body what exactly and how exactly you are going to do it what it is all about and what kind of an understanding about the topic you have so you can um, so ideally it should be uh, uh, one I should ideally it should be one and a half page uh, but here because it is being developed by students so it is like somewhere uh, uh, six page long it should not be but it, it you, you you are very uh, and you are very um, um, uh, full of energy kind of a thing uh, when it comes to the first proposal so you want to put in everything that's not necessary actually so then you have documentary objectives now with what objectives you are moving forward that is what really important that is what is important to write here so for each and every documentary these objectives objectives can be different um, um, so like common objective is you want to um, sensitize masses uh, about this particular topic you want to bring change awareness about this particular topic so this is very common documentary one of the very common documentary objective but your specific uh, project can have a specific objective also so it is up to you to find out what documentary objectives you are going to write about your um, uh, documentary film then obviously even if you are a student at, at a student uh, stage you really have to think about that if you get a chance where you would like to air it where with which channel you would like to um, uh, uh, you would like to see your film on so 
planning about uh, uh, airing and distribution is very important because uh, in your professional life this is one of the concerns that will actually affect what kind of a film you are making and how much budget you are, you, you are um, going to uh, get. So airing and distribution becomes very important. Uh, next in the series is basically your production timetable. Um, uh, so suppose phase one is pre-production. So I will say that I will take two months for uh, my pre-production and because I have to go to different locations. So in phase two, you can say that I have because I have to go to five different places. So I can so I will take one and a half uh, a month. And in phase three, obviously, you have to edit it and you have to show it to the commissioning body what kind of a film you have made. So to edit you may take around one one and a half month but the the time that i'm saying two months one and a half month and one and a half month it solely depends what kind of a project you are working what kind of a project and what kind of a budget you are working with so it becomes very important uh, that uh, how much budget you are getting and uh, when what is the time for delivery so that becomes very important because then you really have to um, uh, ask, ask for the budget also. You really have to justify why are you asking for that kind of a budget. If I tell you that a student, um, uh, when you start hiring and everything, a student documentary can cost you not less than one lakh rupees uh, because you take camera for five, ten days and and then you ask uh, transportation from your college and everything. You manage all this at your own and trust me, it will not be less than that because then you obviously uh, college gives you, um, uh, college university or film institute gives you um, uh, edit machine also and everything. So all the resources combined, if you put a professional fee uh, or, or commercial charges on that, um, any product that your college or university or a film school makes is not less than one lakh rupees. That is minimum. So uh, even if you are a student, put the actual cost in the budget that uh, you will be, uh, suppose you are independent and you are making a film. So put all that detail in budgeting and, and, and shoot it uh, and, and make it like, like that. Now, the major problem in making a documentary proposal, at least at a student level, is, sir, what should I write in, uh, in uh, key, key personnel? We are all friends and um, uh, he is my friend, he is my friend, he has done some film, he has done some, f some film. So this, this was exactly the problem which even I faced when I asked the students to write this, this documentary proposal. But um, they said, Ki, sir, how do we write this? We have done a little So that is what is the most challenging part. I read out one uh, brief description where I am changing the name. And um, uh, suppose his name is... Uh, uh, X, Y, Z. Now, the X, Y, Z, so I am reading, this is how you can write uh, the description, which is slightly, you know, close to professional, but you can write it. Uh, so, operating as the director in this documentary, his previous projects include popular television serial like so and so, and advert advertisements uh, like so and so, in which he has worked as second AD to the director. He has directed various short films including so and so, uh, his uh, uh, and which won the best film award for the film so and so at so and so festival and, uh, um, and a consolation prize for uh, so and so film at so and so festival in 2019. He has also worked as a DOP in a student film uh, uh, in a student art film and if and an executive producer in very various short films. Now is the time to discuss about documentary script format. As you can see on your screen, it's a format in which you should write your documentary script. A format is a kind of framework that accommodates more information in limited space films, comics, television, news and soap operas have their own format structure in which they prefer to write. Most of the formats you explore on internet in, and in many documents or books are different in nature. Many of them only have audio and visual blocks. What is very interesting about this format is that it also includes 
narration along with visuals and sound and few other blogs have been added for your convenience um the biggest strength of this format is that it gives you a clear idea of what visuals you are going to have on a certain piece of uh, uh, narration and you are also sure about sound effect also so in this video we together uh, explore what is a documentary uh, why they are important why they are called non fiction film how style wise they are different how it has evolved over the years the people who are involved in a documentary film making process and about how to write a documentary proposal and the documentary script format as well i hope that the information provided in this video will come handy whenever you need it and this video must have solved some of your doubts i look forward seeing you in the next video till then take care and stay safe